All right, we are back, guys. Solar Club taking. Oh God, did I write ogre there? Seriously, stupid brace. Um, it's Catman Champions. I wrote ogre for some reason in the other team's thing for the draft, but it's Catman. There we go. Much prettier. Yes, Catman Champions taking on Solar Club and game one going to Solar Club in a little bit of an interesting fashion, but that's over and done with. We are in game yep. two. Unfortunately, we have lost Mini Beaver. As he had to go take care of something, but that's fine. We've got plenty of dumb things to say between the three of us. We don't need three people saying yeah, dumb things. Don't, we don't need the dumb, dumbest of them all. <laughs> we'll be good without him. That's that guy. It's good. It's good to have him on. Um, but anyway, first ban on Keeper of the Forest, and both sides using actually some extra time. Deciding that's interesting. Bands. Keeper of the Forest, first ban. Yep. Do we ever see him? I, you told him that you've been seeing him a bit more recently, but yeah, I haven't seen him, and I haven't even seen him banned, which is interesting. It's Could this be a sign of been, tempest? It it could could be that they really want the early tempest. Maybe they'll even first pick it. I guess they felt like last game it did a lot of work, which is fairly true. I mean, it was at the center of some pretty important team fights, but yeah, we've definitely yeah. been seeing a lot more of it, especially in diamond division. We've been seeing more of it in gold division as well, as people kind of remember how good that hero is, but. Uh, First ban is both okay, apparently not, because Tempest will really? end up by Catman Maybe Champions. they they saw it through. Yeah, that's probably what they figured. They also probably figured if we ban out Swiftblade or Catulophant, then we won't get the other one. So now you can get one of those two heroes, and we'll take the other one. Yeah, I feel like Cthul is the only pick here, and he's the yeah. most powerful in the game. And I wouldn't be surprised if that is their first pick. All right, we'll see. Plenty of options on the board as a result of the Parasite and Ophelia bans, so most of the jungler is removed, really. Oh, are we not the only one casting this? Huh. Apparently not. I don't know if Lash actually did cast this. He's definitely in these games. I'm gonna go see. I'm curious. Either way, I don't care. I like <laughs> to cast stuff. And I cast everything, even if it's a lot of times covered. So that it's nice to have all the games in gold in one place. Your channel. That's right. Yeah. It's all it's all my channel, guys. Come at me. Would be a shame if they were missing a few just because someone else cast them. Yeah, I am. But did we see the little fun. This right. So first pick, not a huge surprise. Let's see. What was this game even played? Okay, I'm so starting. I'm starting to not care anymore. But second pick, silhouette. All right, Marcus Moy definitely loves Silhouette, although I'm not yeah. sure if that makes a ton of sense with Swiftblade on the board. I wouldn't be surprised if Solar Club picked that hero up. Yep. <laughs> when we played Instant Reflex with uh, when he was in it, Marcus Moy, uh, we always blind banned Revenant and Silhouette because these are his favorite heroes right. and his most comfortable heroes, and he always dominates with them. So we just banned them, and it usually worked. Yeah. Didn't work out so well for them last game, as Marcus playing this well on the... Uh... No, it did work out. Marcus playing this play did very well, but they did win. Obviously, Slayer Club. I'm getting confused, because team switched sides, and apparently that's enough to make me not remember who they are. <laughs> I, I like the Cracker pick. It's good against yeah. the melee, melee carriers. It's so easy to pick them off with the charge and ultimate and you know, everything. So I like it. I do, too. I'd like to see a Rhapsody here now from the Legion team. Gonna provide them with some good team fight potential and some defense, and I think yeah, that's gonna save their Rhapsody. carry from getting jumped by Kraken. Right. And if they can, if they can pick Rhapsody here and somehow get Magmus through the second stage of bands, they're gonna have a pretty fantastic team. Empath, in fact, is gonna be the choice. All right, Empath with Blade's a nice combination, but it makes me think that they're gonna pick another support. But yeah. Maybe not. Usually, usually, uh, reps usually gets banned in the next banning phase. So unless it's picked no. now, but yeah. No. Similarly, yeah, I'd like to see the Rhapsody pick from the Hellborn side again. Best support in the game, guys. Her winning percentage has been falling, so maybe not anymore. But nope, give me uh, that. Which, That's fine. Uh, what heroes? Rhapsody? Uh, yeah, she for the first two cycles she was at like 65% win, which was uh -huh. awesome. And the last two cycles, she's been in the low 40s, so now she's gotten passed up by Empath, Glacius, and Engineer, I think, are the three hard supports oh. that are... She dropped below 50%? No, uh, just for the last two cycles. Overall, now, she's just at, like, she's at 52%, so she's not doing all that well. 
I wonder what that depends on. I think it's mostly because people were like, holy crap, Rhapsody is good for the first two cycles, and then everybody started picking her. She was really caught. She was the most caught picked hero anyway before, but she's like far and away the most picked hero. And more importantly, teams were like, we got to figure out ways to counter Rhapsody. So they were realizing how much how much work she was doing, and they're they're like, all right, let's address this hero before it starts to uh, destroy. Maybe us. people actually maybe people actually learn to <laughs> interrupt their ultimate. All right. And if you, I mean, if you focus on Rhapsody down, she'll die quick. She is not tanky, and she does not have an escape mechanism, so it's pretty easy to kill her. <laughs> An exception to that is Amphat, who can actually jump inside the right. and survive. Yeah, supports don't usually have great escape mechanisms. Aluna, Empath, uh, it's mostly it. I guess NG Keg Stun if you're really good with it, potentially. Uh, Mermidon, but he's not played very yeah, much. Nobody plays Mermidon. Revenant sort of has an escape mechanism with the uh, Invis. Sirs, yeah. uh, which I li Cersei, I'd like yeah, to see more. That's true. That's, that hero, I feel like. Yeah, she's super powerful, but she has the same problem that a lot of other supports that we don't see do, and that she's just a terrible laner. And if you're going to pick up a hero who is a bad laner, I think there are probably better options, especially like Polywog Priest. Uh, I'd like to see a lot more of that hero. The CC presence is so nice, right. and the push is great. But, anyway. He could definitely work. Enough of Pull heroes that nice. aren't in this game. Let's talk about more heroes that aren't in this game. Rhapsody Bubbles and Revenant all getting banned out by Solar Club. <laughs> Dr. Repulsor and Wretched Hag are banned out by the Hellborn side, and we'll see if what their last ban is. Wouldn't be surprised. You, you can tell that the, the Hellborn is trying to secure, uh, secure the late game with these bans. Right. Removing heavily mobile heroes, do a lot of magic damage, and are very annoying to deal with early on. I feel they got off to a good start. So. Yeah. They already have Swiftblade, they already have Cthulhu Fent. Let's not give them any more Snowball heroes. Seems to be the thinking, but looks like both teams will run a jungler here as, or a uh, second support as all the junglers are banned out. Yeah. I love the jump potential on the Hellburn side at the moment. It's going to be easy to get pickups for sure. Right. Other thing I forgot to mention is the Doctor Pulsar ban isn't just that. It's uh, Noob McNoob actually plays a lot of jungle Doctor, so that's effectively another doc another uh, jungle hero ban for Solar Club. Okay. So. Yeah, inside information if you guys ever want to get back together and form a team and go back to Cold Division and play Solar Club. New big new place like Jungle Doctor. Maybe you have the stats of, I, of how su of successful he is. With I, I don't have Cold Division stats, actually. Okay. Just Diamond. I, I see. Gold Division's a lot bigger, so it's harder to track, and more importantly, there's teams in there that are not very good, so... You know, it'll, yeah. it'll screw with the numbers you, you a little bit. You get skewed results. Right. Yeah. You get like Arachna 100% win. Right. <laughs> and stuff like that. <laughs> because just happened to be against teams that were mostly Silver Division teams. But anyway, right. Pebbles into Engineer pick, so I like that. We don't see nearly enough Engineer anymore, and the NG Magnus Dude, combo is very powerful. Will we see the Flux, or is it banned? No, uh, it's not it's banned. Not so it's definitely possible, although... I think that's kind if of. If I were related. Legion now, so well, if I were Legion, I would almost consider picking him just so they couldn't. So we talked about the greed last time. Um. Yeah, this no. is like greed times ten. This is gonna you be think so? Jungle Swift Blade. Like, look <laughs> at the amount of farm they need for these heroes. No, uh, C Cthulhu will jungle. I'm pretty sure. No, um, it's, I think it's gonna be a Jungle like, Swift Blade. Well, Noob McNoob did play a jungle doctor, he said, so yeah. it's possible. He, they, play weird, <laughs> they play weird junglers. I think it's going to be a jungle swift blade. It could be okay, jungle Cthulhu good. and a suicide uh, swift blade. Yeah, that's definitely possible. A, but. a jungler swift blade is very easy to punish. So, yeah. Let's see if they do. Well, it's just the last big So, they're going to go for the traditional dual support. The other thing you got to consider here is where do you lane Empath? Do you put her mid with Pebbles? Because solo mid Pebbles is really not a good idea, in my opinion. Yep, it's going to be Noob McNoob on the Swift Blades. This is a jungle Swift Blade. Solo mid Pebbles could work, but it's not good against two people because he's so squishy. Right. But on the other hand, Pebbles and Path is not a good combo. Yeah, they don't have right. a lot of first. And that's my thinking, uh, is that Soul Stealer and Path would be a, a, a much better combo, but then you're going to leave Pebbles solo mid. Let's get it on. So. Yeah, it's going to be interesting. 
But I would like having a short lane uh, uh, support so you can pull and stack and get tons of experience. Right. Either way. Especially for Soul Sailor, who's going to want a lot of jungle stacks, but... Again. Also, if they have amp if they have amp out there, he can also stack for Swift Blade right. in his that's jungle. Th that's the thing is, back to the greed, it's going to be harder for them to take stacks uh, with Soul Stealer if Swift Blade is killing the entire jungle. Yeah, that's also true. Yeah, exactly. Uh, let's uh, fix our uh, sinking. Yeah, I'm at uh, 10, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, yep. 40. All right. And both sides looks like they're headed into the Legion Woods. Hellborn sending just four heroes though, and Silhouette's headed top. And that could prove useful for the Legion team. Well, yeah, and they have Swift Play, which is a really good play. You can always kill two people by yourself. Right. So I think Legion is gonna own this. Oh look at this, this is Yeah, this is gonna be Swift. real bad if they can get this engagement. Swifty's hiding. They gotta get somebody that doesn't have an escape mechanism, though, particularly Glacius oh, or Engineer. Oh, there they are. Charge is gonna be right on to Magmus. Can they lock him down before he gets out of there, though? Yep, actually, he's gonna be in a lot of trouble. Wall gonna go off, and that's an easy kill onto Magmus. So, your freedom was not actually that close, Magmus. <laughs> you were pretty screwed. Yeah. That was just not very good coordination. They should have expected them to do something. It should have been like more as a unit, I guess. Right. Well, the greedy lineup is off to a good start, and they're going to need that. They're going to need a really good landing phase because there's a lot of potential for this team to not have enough farm on any of their heroes. And immediate counter ward as well, so a really good start. Not only did they get the first blood, but they also managed to pick off the rune ward from the Hellborn team, and they don't have any vision. That's big. That's super big. Yep. And yeah, no huge surprises in the lanes here. Suicide Cthulhuffin, Solomon Pebbles, Jungle Swifty, and Dual Bot, Soul Stealer, and Empath. Over inside, gonna counter that bottom lane with Kraken Solo, which is okay. I'm not a huge fan of Suicide <laughs> Kraken, but it's alright. And mid, gonna be Engineer and Magmus. Top, gonna be Glacius and Silhouette, so. Um, I was gonna say that. Glacius went for the body block in hard camp when Cthulhu Fan doesn't even have his W and <laughs> took a lot of damage for no reason. It doesn't. I'm not sure about that. And they should probably know that considering the Cthulhu Fan uses a stun. Oh, will he get this ward before the spawn? Oh! Yep. Nice. Just barely. Big plays from Palacius. Bottom lane. Oh, with level 1 gank. Yeah, Swift Blade is sort of trying to set this up as he's got a spin. And boots. And Kraken gonna put the splash auto onto Empath, who does not have Essence Link. She's got wall. And it's gonna actually be a really nice wall. They're blocking out the Kraken. Are they gonna have enough damage to finish it off? Is the question. Demon hands are available from Soul Stealer. But they're blocked out or something? Oh. What? Hmm? Soul oh, yeah, I don't think he had enough. I don't think he would be enough damage or pretty low damage. Like, one. is the Soul Stealer Q red for you? Uh, no, it seems normal. Huh. Middle lane Pebbles isn't a lot of trouble, so we'll see actually. Oh, he's gonna turn this on a Magmus with a counter truck. Oh, that was beautiful. Yeah. Well, very well Great done. Truck. Hmm. It says. This is, this is gonna be really good say, for the Legion. Uh, requirements not met for me, but they're up. He's got plenty of mana. He hasn't been using them, so. <laughs> I don't know what the hell that is, but. Is Han perhaps a little oh. bit buggy right now? Oh, it doesn't show for me, so it's super weird. Yeah, top lane, Cthulhuflin getting a lot of damage onto him, so I'm gonna try to get the last auto here. Will kick the collect the kill, kill, so if you manage to get their first kill, and Catman Champion's gonna try to work their way back into this game. As they're already down a little bit in gold and a little bit in experience. You told me the Swiffer was gonna jungle, but he's just <laughs> He's not, yeah. I it, thought he was going to jump though. And great. they're going to jump on top of this Magmus who's dead. I don't think he could have asked for a better timing. Yeah. That was super good. That was pretty fantastic. And 350 GPM on this Pebbles, so... Worried about the dual lane versus solo Pebbles, and apparently shouldn't have been. Well, I guess, but I don't think you should win it like this either. Yeah. 
And bot lane, Essence not going on to Kraken. He's going to take a fair bit of damage from this Empath. And in fact, just keeps staying in Essence Link range to maximize the amount of damage he takes, apparently. I don't know why. So yeah. Blade is back over here again. So he's sort of jungling, he's also sort of not. He, he has to assist, but he has no experience and no money. I'm not sure if he's good. Yeah, he's killing creeps in the woods now. A couple of stacks and he's up there again, so I guess it's fine. When he has level 3, he's gonna kill uh, like the medium camp really quick. They need to stack this though, I don't know why they're right. not stacking the medium camp. Empath is deep. She's going for a ward. Uh, buy one at least. She should have fo she should have prioritized stacking the medium right. camp for sure. Uh, it seems like it would have been a better idea. And middle lane actually, Pebbles need to get jumped on once again. There's a lob surge with the keg. Turret gonna come out, and that's gonna do a lot of work as well. Blaze just coming here. There's a combo on a Magmus. Will they kill him? Nope. Oh. Steam bath is there. Just enough health from Mag, and they finally get a counter kill onto this Pebbles. Oh, and yep, meantime top lane die from Silhouette. It will get the Death Lotus finish off, but she's gonna die. So that's actually a good trade for Legion in the end. And in the bottom, Empath taking a lot of damage from this Kraken, who does not have charge up for a couple more seconds, and has no torrent actually, so went for the two one build. And if he had, had torrent oh, there. Charge. If he had, if he had, had torrent there, he might have had a kill. I know. I don't know why you did that. Is that common? Is it coming to max out your charge? Not really. I guess maybe he just wants a shorter cooldown? But it's not like 11 second cooldown even at level 4 is going to matter all that much. It's not going to happen twice in one fight in the early game anyway. Mm, that's interesting at least. It's nice to see some alternative builds going up. I guess, but it'd be nicer if they made sense. I think the 1-1-1 one, one, one build is definitely the best. Anyway, middle lane, Empath is there, and so is Swiftblade. They're trying to get something here. They will get the initial kill onto Engineer. Kegstown only going to hit the Magic Immune Swiftblade, so... Not that big the, a deal. The Kegstown, I don't know. It didn't look like he was going to get it out. <laughs> it looked like the corpse was from it. Yeah, what? Zombie Engineer throwing Kegstowns? Not a problem. <laughs> and Soul Sealer, Demon Hand, not going to connect. That might have been a kill on the Kraken as well, but he is able to get the charge. He's going to go back. Looks like. Oh, Pebbles missing the Starlight Man's mid. Yeah. Would have been a kill, I think. So, Pebbles has his bottle, Magmus has his bottle, and I wouldn't be surprised to see Kraken grab a bottle as well. The Tula Flint apparently going the boots route instead of the suicide bottle. Actually, Kraken playing a TP. Well, let's see if they do something mid here. Yeah, she's yeah. setting up her game. I think that's what's going to happen. And Pat's still trying to help out this uh, Pebbles, but... Glacius looking for something. They've got a lot of Surge and Keg, so... Pebbles going to move on over. There's the rim spawn well, bottom, and he's going to go pick it up. They should have known that Pebbles didn't have... Top lane! Before, so. Silhouette diving on top of a Cthulhu oh. who had half health. Under a tower, ends up oh. paying for that pretty heavily. Too bad I missed that. I would like to see what happened. Uh, I missed the beginning of it, but just at the end. It was basically like a tool fan trampled the cell, and... I mean, it's not like he was low on life. He had half his health, so I don't know what Marcus might was thinking right there, but it... Couldn't have made too Maybe much he was... sense. If you only have Ghost Marchers and Silhouette, you're not very tanky, so nope. you really careful. But yeah, when the, they were gonna gank mid there, I would like to see them go for Pebbles earlier, because he didn't have mana for stun, and they should've known that. So they were kind of safe. Should have just gone for it. Definitely. And well, this Cthulhu is doing so well. It's such a good piece right here. <laughs> it's a 300 GPM against what was essentially a dual lane. And these aren't bad players either. No. These are good players. And Marcus Moy, yeah, definitely knows how to play Silhouette, so it's not like... There's any question about that? Yeah. So play just hanging out in the bottom river, river, looking for a gank. I would like to see him farm a bit more. Yeah. Stack like they're missing the stack again. Stack something. Stack the medium camp. Stack the easy camp. Stack the ancients. He's gonna miss the stack on the small camp. Tried to go for it, but not gonna have it. Probably should have known he wasn't gonna get it, but I guess hope springs eternal.
That's a nice saying. Have you not heard it before? Nope. Oh. Yeah. Pebbles has a BB here. I think he yeah. can just one shot the Fragments if he gets the chance. Yep, and here comes Invis Swift Blade as well. So this, yep, there goes the DD rune, and actually Magmus backs off because he probably realizes they're probably going for something at this point. Rev Ward is going to spot Swifty, so they know exactly where he is. That's really unfortunate. Yeah. 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 There are four heroes here, they're going to waste so much time. And they didn't actually have vision of the bot rune either on the Hellborn side, so they did not know that Swiftblade was invisible. And they and also yep. saw all three heroes moving top. And yeah, that's going to be a death on Pebbles. Pretty easy. Eruption used even. It's probably not necessary. Regardless, does it get the kill? Silhouette is kind of hanging out up here, eating a tree. And Great warding will, the fall, will find her. We'll actually connect on both sides of the trample. Obliterate is there as well. So we're going to have to port to her illusion. But it's all the way back here. And she's going to try to teleport out. One more auto attack. We'll finish her off. No, they didn't see her. Oh, Ooh. that's painful. You need to use direct the pathment there. You can't yeah. use your right click. Gotta eight click the ground. Yeah. yeah. Bottom lane. Meanwhile, soul still gonna be a lot of trouble. The energy field gets put off. Release the field. The release kraken is there as well. Looking for the soul burst. Not gonna happen. And right. Canador falls also. So all of a sudden, a couple of things going in favor of Catman champions, and they are right back in this game. They've essentially tied the golden experience lead. Now, that's a lot of. Uh, that's a thing that a lot of top players haven't done. They haven't bound a thing called direct pathing, which is really important, like, uh, if there's someone hiding in the woods, blocking your way, your hero will not even spot them and just turn around and you won't know why. But with direct pathing, your hero would just keep on trying to move there. Uh, in that case, if he had direct pathing, he would have seen the, uh, the guy tipping, but he didn't use it. So, people need to bind that and use it more often. It's also good for last hitting. If there's creep in the way, your hero moves around and you miss the creep. If you had the repath thing, you could have just gone up to it instead. So it's something that more people should use. Yeah. One of my friends uses it. He keeps telling me I should enable enable it. And I I just don't. Yeah. My solution. To be honest, I haven't I haven't enabled it either. Cause my solution is I, just to be good. It's worked yeah. out. It's worked out so well. So far. I'm too conservative for doing that. I can't do new binds. And top tower will go down. Tool friend could be in some trouble here. Actually, no, he shouldn't turn this on the silhouette. And Empath coming in as well. Can't afford to losing though, so she will be just fine. And the other thing that people don't use enough is just A clicking the ground. Because I've seen a lot of jukes that go through because people are like trying to target a hero but they keep getting fogged. And if you A click, the second that you get vision, you'll just auto attack. Yeah. So yeah, you just get locked in. It's sometimes sometimes it's just don't spam your right click. If yeah. you have a right click, your hero, like you will almost like your hero will almost automatically not get juked. You just go into the woods and find him. If right. you just right click and let him go by himself. A lot of people just spam the right click in front of them, and that usually oh. gets themselves juke. So, there's a lot of things you can do in this game. There are a lot of things you can do in this game. <laughs> as, far as, like so as far as complexity goes, MOBAs are up there in terms of difficulty it's, level. It's, Mo it's MOBAs and Super Smash Bros. Those are the two games. The uh, most complicated game I think that is currently existent in existence is still Pokemon. What, what did you say? It's still po it's, it's Pokemon. I still think that's the most complicated game that, the that's Legion out right now. Tower. Well, the most complicated RPG, or you mean the no. card game? No, 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 the the video game series. I think it's the most complicated game. Oh, well, there's a lot of randomness in it. At least there is, but like, there's a lot of hidden factors in there that if you go look up like individual values and effort values and stuff and uh, uh, all sorts of stuff for Pokemon, it's it's. It's insane, like, the amount of complexity there is. Anyway, bottom line, Kraken gonna get caught up, and nice release Kraken actually, gonna save him at least the time being. He will have charge back up, and he'll be just fine. Um, okay, so Twitch chat, can you please explain exactly how to use direct pathing? What direct pathing does is essentially, current Han pathing draws a line of, basically, places you can traverse in the map between where you are and where you click and then your hero follows the shortest line that doesn't 
you know, include cliffs or stuff like that. Direct pathing just makes that a straight line. So, for example, if you if there's a cliff between where you where you are and where you want to go, and you use direct pathing, it'll just run you into the cliff. If you use traditional pathing, it'll run you around the cliff. Which means that so, actually top lane, empath, they're sorry, not empath. Katua gonna be in some trouble. Just charges away though, and there's a tree guy, well he will still die. Um, there are a lot of situations where you do actually have range to cast something if you get closer, but the way that the map is built and the traditional pathing works, it doesn't realize, I guess, that... Anyway, yeah, Metal Land Magnus can die as well, caught yeah, that. Yeah, PKO Magnus. Uh. On, uh, on Pebbles, yeah. But, uh, anyway, so there's, there's some areas that you can walk, but apparently the game just, like, doesn't realize that or something. And if you right-click there, it works, but it's kind of hard. If you use direct pathing, it'll essentially just walk you to the edge of where you can actually walk, as opposed to trying to use traditional pathing, and uh, and then it, it would at which point the you have more to walk to. The game just doesn't really do it. That was a good explanation. It was. It it, it probably. I, I'm I'm not sure if it was, but that's <laughs> maybe it was a bit lot outdrawn. But yeah, uh, I'm, I try to be as thorough as possible, and I. I'm not great at being concise, so... Um, hopefully that makes sense to you. If not, continue to ask questions in, in chat, and uh, we'll, we'll do our best to answer them. But, yeah, I mean, it's definitely a useful tool that it can have a lot of value if you, if you know how to use it. The more you use it, the more you'll realize how many uses right. there are for it. Right. So, for example, if you're, uh, you're being chased and you're in a tight spot, you can use it to climb over uh, hills and stuff. Right. And yeah, you can do so much. It's, it's a great tool. It's a good way to S2 yourself past stuff. <laughs> yep. And also for last hitting, which is also so that. annoying sometimes. Yeah. Oh, mid lane now. Yeah. Oh, yeah, mid lane. Anyway, they do manage to catch out that empath who is by herself for some reason. As the rest of her team is pushing top. And mid lane is also getting pushed out by the Hellborn side. Looks like both towers will fall at just about the same time. The the top tower and tower. here goes the mid tower. The Hellborn have destroyed a Legion tower. What is your opinion on the Nilsson here on the Soul Sinner? It's fine. It's not great. It's fine. Like, I don't really have that many targeted yeah. spells. Yeah, I think it's the best when they don't have many targeted spells. Like when it's like this, you will always get something they want to use on him. Well, Other than the torrent, I guess, which is a good throwaway thing. Other yeah. than that, there's there's only the freeze which they really want to use on him, and then probably like a ship stick in the future. I mean, I think the the problem is essentially that now you have four other targets you can use the freeze on. Maybe not Swift Blade, because he'll just spin out of it, but. You know, at least three other targets you can use Freeze and Torrent on. When you have a lot of Nullstone cancelable spells, then it essentially forces you to either waste some, because you probably don't want to use them in quick succession on your teammates, or the Nullstone will eat something. But, yeah, I guess there's there's two ways of looking at it. Yeah. I think it's fine. It's not yeah. it's not super, but it's fine. It's fine. I mean, Nullstone's a good enough item now that there are very few heroes where it's bad. Speaking of Nullstone and Soul Stealer, oh. it's not gonna help very much with a couple of ultimates on his head. And pretty easy kill. Uh, Legion has to get up some lane wards. Lane wards is very good in this part of the game. Yeah. Uh, they're gonna try to gank lanes all the time like they just did and they did before as well. So lane wards are super important. And Hellborn actually has one in the middle lane. Right. So that's good. As we have a portal key on Magmus and Kraken just buying his portal key now, so the jump potential from Hellborn has started to get really, really good. And they're gonna start to knock down towers. Um, no counter push coming out either, they're just towers. running around. Let's cancel that port, thank you. So that's gonna help them open up the map a little bit, and as a result, those portal keys will become even more effective. Another portal key on Engineer. So we got four PKs on this Hellborn team. Yeah. Not bad. Yeah. Maybe we, maybe he could go for a mock on the Cthulhu fan. For a mock, so he can just go in there and stop uh, all PK. <laughs> he needs a PK of his own and then a mock, so then he can PK on top of the heroes that are sitting back waiting to PK. And 
cancel all the PKs. He gets the, he gets the Master Lab though, which is the more serious pickup. I don't like thing. it that much, honestly. You don't? No. I mean, this is not a minion heavy team. And it's like it's a fine item, but it's also 18 minutes in. So, how much is a 200 hit, hit point heal gonna do for you at this point? Well, if, if, if there's an item that costs 1600 that gives everyone on your team two Mighty Blades, I think it's a good item any time it's, in the game. It's a good item. I don't know if it's a good item any time in the game, but, like, that could have been a portal key now. When you think about it like that, it could have been a portal key or something that would probably be better. But I think someone should always have an Astral label when you're playing. It would, it would it's certainly like, be nice. Like, kind of like with gnomes before they nerfed it, like, you should always have a gnomes on your team. And you should also have a Ring of the Teacher or a Abyssal Skull. So, you shouldn't miss those items. Yes, Abyssal Skull you should have on every single team. Souls Bulwark you should probably have on every single team. Um, Astrolabe, oh. especially if you can get it early, is a nice item to have. This is actually true, like, people, like, many teams don't get these teamfight items. And it usually buys them. And people wondered why SG won so much. Guess what they yeah, did exactly. every single game? Pat <laughs> exactly. was gonna get jumped by a couple of heroes off the side, he's gonna be in a lot of trouble. Empath while actually doing a lot to interrupt, a nice portal key again from Engineer, doing a lot of work, is the energy field gonna catch them all? So Empath's gonna jump inside of Cthulhu, but he's gonna die, and then she's gonna die, so... It's nice that you have the escape mechanism, but it does mean that if the hero you're in dies, you're basically screwed. This is quite reminiscent of the last game where... Uh... Uh, the Hellborn team, or Dokka, or whatever, they were in the lead in the beginning. Yeah. No, actually, they took it back. Legion was in the lead, right? Uh, Catman Champions was in the lead, and then Solaire Club. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, this looks like Soul's gonna get caught out as well, so those portal keys on Magnus and Kraken. Crushing it. Yeah. They need lane wards. They really do. And Swift Blade gonna get a try to get a counter kill. Mark Smoy wow. with the man up. And he gets paid for it. No, they have all <laughs> the momentum right now. There you go. You <laughs> gotta be manly. They have all manly. the momentum right now. Yeah, it's 13 to 7. And this is this is the part in the game, especially for Magnus and Kraken, where they are just feeling good. I mean, they got their brand new portal keys. Right, they can go out and do whatever they want. They're a young man about town with a car. <laughs> I actually think that the he shouldn't get no stone as a soul stealer, but instead get a, a tablet. I think tablet would have been good here on soul stealer. It's really? an overlooked item on carries, but it's so it good is, against. Soul it is an overlooked item on carries, and looks oh, like empath is dead. Valiant so good against to live, both, but yeah, both engineer and the uh, kraken. It's so yeah. good against those heroes. I mean, they definitely do need a tablet, and they need it soon. There's another item that Cthulhu could have gotten instead of an astrolabe. Um, but yeah, that's the problem, is they don't really have too many really good tablet carriers. I guess probably Pebbles is the best. Uh, astrolabe was a good pickup, but they decided not to man up and push towers, so yeah. now it's starting to not look that good anymore. Yeah, I don't think he used it once. And Elephant also going to get jumped by Silhouette. Nice avoiding on the trample, and he will have to just run away. So Marcus Moy effectively split pushing here, obviously always using his illusion to go somewhere else. Top lane, Engineer is sort of getting aggressive with uh, Swiftblade, which I feel... Uh, Engineer is, has more form and more levels than the enemy <laughs> Swiftblade, which is quite interesting. Well, jungle Swiftblade, man. It's interesting. Yeah. Jungle it's roaming. Semi -jungle. Yeah, semi roaming, semi jungle. Uh, but he did actually succeed with lots of ganks. Yeah, they missed the charge on Kraken, it doesn't matter because Empath he had a torrent of splash oh, and a lob pain. surge. Yeah, and they do get the kill on Link 06 as Pebbles came in for the assistance. Yeah, that's a good job by Pebbles, that's what he needs to do. He needs to also get these ganks. That's a good job. Uh, Silhouette is getting out of control. Yep. He's farming very well, like and super Commodore. efficient. She's You'd think Soul Stealer well. 
You'd think Toll Stealer was the better farmer, but this guy is showing that that might not be true. I mean, Soul Stealer might be the better farmer. Part of the problem, I think, is they have a dual support on Hellborn, and so they're able to create more space for the silhouette. On the Legion side, they have four cores, all of whom want farm. This is not, again, it goes back to what we talked about in the very beginning of the, of the game. This is a super greedy lineup. So the fact that Kandorf has 440 gold per minute is actually not that bad, in my opinion, considering he has to compete with Swiftblade and Cthulhuffin and Pebbles for CS. And kills, for that matter. He's not going to get that many kills with Pebbles around. Yeah, just like last game, they picked very greedy, but last yeah. game they, it worked out, it and did. this game is, seemed like it will. And looks like top lane, once again, going to jump on top of Engineer. Spin is their easy kill. Counter from Silhouette is they're going to try to lock down the spell, yeah. And oh. goes Swift lane. Almost, close. Almost got out of there with the pork, but unable to live, so. Oh well, one for one, probably a trade that uh, both sides will take in some respects. New, new farming a little bit better than Engineer at this point, so probably a little bit better for them. Yeah. Hellborn looking like a better team right now. They're stacking the Asians and they're moving together for ganks. It looks like the Legion team is very spread and don't really know what to do. Right. And they might find Cthulhu here. They might will find Cthulhu here. He's in a lot of trouble. Kraken didn't really realize that, but the release Kraken and the Glacial Downpour, so between those two abilities, a lot of damage, a lot of lockdown. Easy kill. And... Legion's team's looking a bit like an all-random team, to be honest. Yep. Now that I think of it, there's not much synergy at all. No. <laughs> Just a bunch of farmers and. Hey guys, let's just pick a whole bunch of really good heroes and see how that works out. Yeah. I would like to see maybe an int hero instead of the soul stealer. Like a hag, perhaps. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, my cat has invaded my room, so. <laughs> it demands attention. My cat. My cat just sleeps all day, I never see him. I've uh, been at school for like the last six years, uh, which means that I haven't been home for most of the time, so now that I am home like all day, they have quickly learned that I'm home all day, and they come <laughs> in here all the time. Hey, pet me, pet me. Yeah. It's like they got stuff to do. Attention. <laughs> Anyway, 179 hero kills uh, for this Hellborn team, about 10k gold and 12.5k experience, so definitely a good lead, but once again, we saw this similar type advantage last game, and yeah. it seemed like Catmans didn't really know how to close it out. This game they do have Silhouette as opposed to Swiftblade, which I would say is a slightly better carry, and Marcus Moy definitely much more comfortable on this uh, hero. Uh, it did go downhill after they dove the tower, uh, I mean dove the base, it started to escalate. Right. So let's see if they make the same mistake. It doesn't look like they're gonna even use this token though. Yeah. Maybe well, just keep farming. That's a little too bad. It's got a minute and a half left on it, so Solo will take this top tower pretty the easily. Destroyed a legion tower. And... I think they can keep this up. You see the golden experience, it just keeps going their yeah, way so much. Does. They have complete map control. And the Legion heroes are just fighting for farm and it's not looking good at all. Yeah, it looks like they are trying to sort of use this token. It's got just about a minute left on it, and they're grouped up pretty heavily in middle. So, let's see. They're gonna try to uh, they're gonna counter push bottom, it seems. Do their best. The Hellborn have destroyed a Legion yeah, tower. Well, they can kind of push all they want, but it looks like Hellborn are winning this race. Uh, yes. Looks like the Legion team is not doesn't really know what to do right now. Right. And I mean, they have two heroes back in their own base, and a couple of heroes pushing bot, and. Empath is inside, I guess. Oh, so they actually don't have any TPs on the Hellborn team. Uh -oh. only Magnus. And 
they will stop the teleport actually from Soul Stealer. That's pretty big. That means him and Empath are not coming back. Empath can drop a wall and an Essence Link, but Engie really wants this. Essence Link breaks the stun. Meanwhile, back into this uh, Legion base, looks like they will be able to kill the Pebbles. As Marcus Moy is looking to finish off these melee racks, he's getting pretty damn low. So Slash is there. Get, this, get the Six illusion, seconds. really, really, really. You're not gonna kill the racks. Thank you. One second, one second. Oh, oh one wow. Second. He's gonna get stunned out, but he should get back up here. It sort of is like looking like True Grapple was still available, but in fact it is not. He uses it again, and now he's gonna have to try to run away. He should be okay here. He's sort of faking like he wants to keep fighting. And probably not great here. Gonna run out yeah, Soul Burst and cancelled it though. And the Release Crack actually gonna get three heroes. The Engineer's there as well. Oh no, that's really awful. And their Soul Burst finally does go off, but not enough. Eruption gonna help finish off a bunch of heroes here as well. Blaze is gonna be in trouble. He will fall. Double damage rune is on Soul Stealer. And unable to kill the Soul away. Which made no sense to me. Well, he was one auto attack away. Cracking gonna get a charge off onto Swift Blade. And that's gonna be. Four heroes that dead was, now. I have to say, that was just completely unlucky by the Legion team. Yeah. He was charging that ultimate and he got stunned by the crew grapple in the very edge of it. That was so unfortunate. And and the token, if that had been a second oh, yeah, it would have been, <laughs> been a dead silhouette. Instead, it's a genocide. Empath actually coming back up. And it will be mid racks. We'll see if it looks to try to take anything else. And it looks like tier 2 bottom will be their focus. Yeah, the momentum is completely in Halborn favor and it's been most of the game. Tower. You can tell. Yeah, and now they have what might be an insurmountable lead. So, the, cord the, the timing from Hellborn, whether or not it was intentional, but it was pretty damn perfect because Marcus Moy was like kiting them for so long, making so much time for his uh, team to show up and get there and they got there right when he was just about going alright guys I'm kinda getting low my abilities are on cooldown this isn't looking great and they're like hey release the Kraken, eruption, lava surge, yay good times the whole squad yeah can't mean to help him yeah I'd like so. to see a more coherent. I'd like to see a more coherent draft next time for the Legion team. Yeah, something that. I'm works saying the together. Legion team, but I should maybe call them by the name. Solar Club. Solar Club, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Thunderclaw and Angie. Okay. Huh. Well, I guess it doesn't matter. They're pretty far ahead. Yeah. I don't know. Ooh, I love Thunderclaw. Uh, <coughs> eruption and Hellfire coming up. And he actually oh, didn't get the oh. eruption off. Oh, there it is. Oh, are you ahead of me or something? I'm at 3111. 3112, 3113, 14, 15. Top lane, actually. They're gonna get two with the stalagmites. Soul Burst actually not gonna do all that much damage. Laser Kraken is there. Lava Surge and a Haste Magnus is gonna run away. Here comes the uh, tool open right into the Kraken ultimate. Energy Field doing a lot of disruption here. First one dead is that Soul Sealer. Meanwhile, in bottom lane, Marcus Moy is pushing. So he's shrunken head up on Kraken. He's trying to run away and actually looks like he might be okay. Pebbles trying to finish him off, but a keg sun's there. Slagmites will finally, so finally kill him, but they do still kill him. Oh, kill. And okay, I guess that's the game. <laughs> oh, yeah, the Lewis was pushing bottom yeah. the whole time. Yeah. So, right there. Catman Champions taking a two to one, or uh, not a two to one, but a one to one series tie, and that means we'll be going to a nice game three. That'll be fun. But Solaire Club a little bit uncoordinated in terms of their draft, and uh, Catman Champions getting a really powerful hero on a guy that knows how to play at 708 gold per minute on Marcus Boy at the end there. It's not bad. It's pretty good. But uh, your final thoughts on that game, there, LG? Uh, not a very coherent draft from Solar Club, so let's hope they make it better next time. Yeah, and definitely enough experience drafting that uh, you'd expect. Game 3, they're going to be a little bit more serious, perhaps. I don't know if this wasn't a serious draft, but if it was, then uh, then I would expect they, more. They only had the lanes like and the strength of each hero in their mind, and not right. really the composition right. as a whole. I mean, yeah, you think about it, like, Soul to their soul burst. How are they going to lock anybody down for him? They've got a couple of stuns, but not particularly big ones. Uh, so like the stalagmites, I guess is the only initiator they had in Cthulhu fun. And if you compare he didn't that, even get PK. If you compare that to something like the Kraken, if you have a Kraken and a soul stealer, it's a great combo. 
works really well. Yep. But um, I'll do it for game two, and we'll be back in just a moment with game three.